Oh no, the annual fee is coming up and I don't want to pay it. Your first instinct is to probably cancel that card, but you have other options. Hey everybody, this is my Gap, and today we'll be speaking about what you should do if you want to cancel your card. Make sure to like this video, it will help with this channel and the YouTube algorithm. So the first thing you should do is that your credit card most likely has benefits and perks that you should maximize prior to canceling the card. For example, if it's a travel card such as the American Express Platinum card, in Canada, it has a $200 annual travel credit. Might as well take advantage of that if you can prior to canceling your credit card. Even in the United States, cards such as the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant Amex card offers a $300 Marriott credit or the Hilton's Honor American Express Aspire card, which offers a $200 Hilton credit. Please note, it's not limited just to travel credits. There are cards that offer credits towards lifestyle, such as the BMO Eclipse Visa Infinite card and more. So make sure to read and understand your credit card's benefits and perks. That way you can maximize it prior to canceling your card. If not, you're just leaving free money on the table, so might as well take advantage of it. By the way, as you probably know, credit cards and credit are becoming more important than ever. People are using their credit cards for everything these days. It's pretty much impossible to live without plastic and to live without a good credit score. And so you would want to know all the benefits that credit cards and credit offer. At creditnation.club, it provides exactly that. Explaining everything you need to know on how to maximize this amazing tool. Teaching you the benefits about maximizing cash back and travel rewards, protection of your assets, how to maintain multiple credit cards, utilizing amazing benefits such as extended warranty, purchase assurance, and travel insurance policies. How to leverage credit to make more money and how to leverage credit to stabilize your assets and equities. And learn the power of disputing any transactions that are found on your credit card due to fraud or false advertising. The program also includes how to protect yourself from fraud and how to pretty much exploit every benefit that credit cards and credit offer. Check out creditnation.club for more information. So with that aside, the second option you have is to make sure to redeem all your travel rewards and cash back. If it's travel rewards, see if you can redeem a flight ticket with it because you get bang for your buck whenever you're redeeming flights for your travel rewards. If you're not flying anytime soon or you can't fly right now due to let's say COVID restrictions, then the next option you have is to transfer those points to another program or cash them out as prepaid gift cards or as prepaid credit cards. Like I said, you get bang for your buck whenever you redeem travel rewards for flights. However, you still get some value when transferring it to another program or when redeeming it as a gift card or prepaid credit card. I recommend not redeeming it for any merchandise or anything else. So no PlayStation 5 or a pair of headphones or else you're just gonna be losing a ton of value. And if it's for cash back, simply redeem the cash back and then just transfer it to your checking account. And there's actually one more thing you can do, which is just simply leave your points and or cash back because what you will do is call the customer support representative of your credit card issuer and ask if it's possible to downgrade to a no annual fee credit card. Most credit card issuers do this with no problem. This will be further explained in the fourth option that you do have. Let me explain option three before we get into option four. So option three, many credit card providers offer their clients retention offers and or annual fee waivers when they want to cancel their credit card. A retention offer is usually when a credit card bribes you into staying because they're offering a decent reward. This seems to be the case for travel rewards cards and for Amex cards. For example, American Express may offer you 10,000, 20,000, or even 50,000 points so that you continue to be a member of their services. However, sometimes they may offer you nothing. And so it's up to you to keep that card or to cancel it. The best thing to say when you call in for a retention offer is somewhere around the lines of, hey, I'm not sure if I will continue to use this card. And so I'm not sure if I will need it in the foreseeable future. And I was wondering if there are any offers that you can do in order to keep me as a card holder. Again, this depends on how much you spend on your card, how long you have your card for, and how many retention offers you have received in the past. The other offer that credit card providers do to retain their clients is to waive the upcoming or previous year's annual fee. However, again, sometimes the credit card provider will not do this, and it's up to you on whether you wanna keep the card or not. Now, depending on the customer support agent or representative, they may agree with offering you a retention offer or an annual fee waiver. 
Now, if they don't, what you can do is politely hang up and call again and see if you can get a sympathetic agent on the line. Another way to persuade an agent to give you a retention offer or a annual fee waiver is to give a good reason. I mean, right now with COVID restrictions and travel restrictions, most travel cards are pretty useless right now. And so you can take advantage of most of the benefits. You can then explain this to the agent. And I would say most agents would agree with you in this scenario and most likely would provide you with a retention offer or an annual fee waiver. So the better the reason, the more likely you will get approved for these. Now, the fourth option that I somewhat mentioned previously, which I think is the best option, is to downgrade to a no annual fee credit card. The benefits of this is that you will still retain your relationship with the credit card provider, thus making it easier to obtain other credit cards and services provided from them. Two, you'll retain your credit limit. If you didn't, then your credit limit would drop and your credit utilization will increase and thus your credit score will slightly get worse, depending on how much you borrow. And three, you'll retain all the payment history you have on file for that credit card and the length of ownership of that card. Basically, the longer you own your credit card or own a source of credit, the better it is for your credit score. And the more payment history you have on file, the better it is for your credit score too. However, the downside to this is that sometimes credit card providers do not like when their clients have access to too much credit. They may see this as a risk, so they may not approve you for a source of credit or for a new credit card. But in my experience, it's a small factor that actually depends on other factors. The reason why I say this is because one, I have a huge credit line myself and I haven't gotten declined for any credit cards for this reason. But I feel like this is more so true when you have poor payment history, 30 plus hard credit inquiries within a year, have a high credit utilization, or a lot of debt and or have low income. So depending on those factors, it may become an issue. So it's a small factor. Anyways, an example of downgrading your credit card would be if you have the Marriott Bonvoy American Express card, you can downgrade it to the Amex Simply Cash card. Now, when you do this, understand that you will be losing a lot of the travel benefits, travel perks, travel credits, and etc. The reason why is because no annual fee credit cards in general tend to have very limited benefits. Not all, but most. But the upside is you will no longer pay the annual fee and still be a client of the credit card provider. Along with what I mentioned prior, you will retain all the credit history on file for that card, thus maintaining your credit score. Now, if you have troubles maintaining multiple credit cards, then maybe it's not the best idea to retain this card and just to cancel it outright. Because at the end of the day, it's best not to owe money to credit and not be in debt and not ruin your credit score. So always do what's best for your specific scenario. If you liked today's video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification. This is Mike Gap signing out. Until next time, peace.